Hey, it's Dean Gilmore, Supply Chain Digest and the Supply Chain Television Channel. Sales and operations planning, one of the key and fundamental processes that drive our supply chains and in the end our company's success. Been around a long time, but yet so many companies still don't have it right and some even just getting ready to the process. So uh, today I'm very pleased to talk about some of the things companies can do to really move their SNOP process and success, for, success forward. Very pleased to be very pleased to be here with Hank Kanitz. He is the uh, Director of Product Marketing for Agility, of course a well-known uh, supply chain software company. He's a, a great person to talk about some of these topics, 25 plus years uh, in the industry, a little bit of time in aerospace early in his career, but uh, then in consumer packaged goods as well as the supply chain technology front. Uh, he's got a, a degree from uh, Michigan State University and he's coming to us today from uh, Logility's headquarters in the greater Atlanta area. Hank, I really uh, thanks so much for joining us here on the Supply Chain Television Channel. Hey Dan, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you know, this SNOP just continues to amaze me. Like I say, it's you know, in some cases, it's, it's, you know, a very mature process, but yet there's so many that don't have it right yet, and there's these, all these things that are happening to keep evolving, uh, you know, what we're doing in SNOP, certainly tying into the financials, big part of that, but as we were preparing for this broadcast, one of the things you mentioned to me is that, you know, over the span of your career, you've seen the uh, SNOP process become a lot more dynamic in terms of the process itself and, and certainly the data that companies are looking at versus, I'm going to say, you know, kind of in the old days, maybe a bit of a rubber stamp kind of thing where the, you know, you know the work gets done by the underlings and then the SNOP meeting comes and the execs kind of say, you know, that's good and move on. You know, what does that really mean in terms of changing dynamics in SNOP and, uh, you know, how, how does it, how does it uh, change the, you know, the overall environment to getting that done? Yeah, Dan, I mean, like you said, SNOP has been a process that companies have used for many years to try to balance demand and supply. And uh, well, early in my career, uh, many of the efforts was really just around that, was to just look at trying to come up with a good consensus plan and then uh, bounce that off your supply plan. And, and many times it was very uh, static, a static view, uh, looking at historical information. Um, and I think over the last, uh, especially over the last 10 years, uh, process and technology has come a long way. It's become much more dynamic uh, and companies are trying to stretch beyond these uh, basic uh, demand and supply match. And uh, systems are, are helping them to, uh, to, to do that. Um, looking into the future, uh, having uh, more information at your fingertips. Uh, while you're uh, uh, conducting the uh, the meetings, even being able to uh, do uh, what if uh, uh, scenarios on the fly to uh, to understand uh, exactly uh, you know what's going on at that time. So very more, much more dynamic, much more real time. You know, and it's uh, from from experience. Uh, you know, trying to put together all of the ideas around what could happen uh, prior to a meeting uh, becomes very problematic. It's it's difficult to to uh, have covered off on all the bases before you go into that meeting. And, you know, walk in with a set of uh, powerpoints, let's say. Uh, but then during the meeting, uh, issues come up and and questions are raised and. Uh, it, it, you know, if you don't have a real-time capability to, to do uh, uh, scenarios, simulations, what-if capabilities, uh, it becomes very difficult to come to consensus in that meeting. And what happens is uh, you walk away from the meeting and you haven't accomplished the goal. So, uh, you know, I think that's really over the last five or ten years is what, uh, you know, companies are, are, are trying to get to is that uh, much more uh, decision-based uh, uh, meetings versus just reviewing historical information. Yeah, I think that's right on. I'll just real briefly mention, I think over the last uh, 10 years, maybe even five years for sure, there's been now just such an emphasis on supply chain risk management and risk mitigation. So that certainly adds to these sort of what if scenarios that companies have to look at today that maybe they weren't paying quite as much attention to uh, seven, 10 years ago. So I think that's contributing to that dy dynamism in the, uh, in the process and the data. Uh, you know, kind of a related topic. We have many, uh, many of the people that are watching here today uh, probably uh, either, you know, have some responsibility for the uh, SNOP uh, uh, process or they aspire maybe to be an SNOP process leader someday. Um, what are, you know, in your experience, what are some of the skill sets that uh, those kind of leaders really need to have and, and maybe how is that changing with this changing nature of SNOP as we just talked about? Yeah, well, as you know, uh, SNOP is a data in intensive, a people intensive, and it's a collaborative process. So it's it's a very uh, challenging role uh, to hold uh, as a leader in a supply chain. 
and, and you know, it's one of the more difficult roles, uh, the uh, sales and operations plan, uh, planning leader. And, and, you know, so from a people standpoint, you have to have uh, negotiation skills. You have to have consensus building skills because you're dealing with not only people in the supply chain, but also people uh, from sales and marketing and finance and executives. You got to have good people skills. That's, that's uh, you know, uh, underlying uh, uh key requirement for a leader for sales and operations planning. I think you got to have good um, meeting facilitation capabilities because obviously you're going through a set of meetings, whether that's, you know, the standard five or seven or, you know, it, it depends on, on the company on how many meetings you're going through on a monthly basis. And you got to have good project and task management capabilities. There's a lot of tasks that take have to take place to get to a consensus and get to a balanced plan. And, and so you got to be very good there. Uh, on the other side, you know, uh, Aberdeen uh, just recently published that uh, uh, they believe or estimate that 65% of the time uh, in the SNOP process is spent uh, dealing with data, gathering the data, analyzing the data, uh, uh, you know, taking data from multiple systems and pulling it together. So you got to have good data management skills. You, you got to have the ability to analyze that data. And I think you have to have solid knowledge of your business to be able to do a good job to analyze that business. You need to know your customers. You need to know your products. You need to know your markets. You need to know what strategies you have to be able to be effective as a, as a data analysis uh, person. And, and then finally, you have to have, uh, it's a very collaborative process, right? So we're, we're exchanging information. We're getting feedback. You got to be able to provide the right data to the right people at the right times and get feedback from those people. Uh, so coordinating that process, coordinating the cross-functional uh, uh, meetings, and and uh, I don't know if this is a is a skill, but you got to have that organizational power uh, to build consensus across uh, uh, the different functions. Yeah, I think that's right on. You know, MIT. I'll just briefly mention a few years ago did some writing on the need for you know supply chain professionals to move from being sort of analyzers and engineers to influencers was I think the term that MIT used. I think that's spot on mm -hmm. with what you just said right there. Another thing you want to talk about, and I'm very interested in, is that you say there's actually quite a bit of uh, synergy, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but uh, uh, support for <clears throat> you know, lean thinking and lean supply chains, that somehow that can be you know, um, aligned with and manifested through the sales and operations process. I've never heard too many people talk about that link between lean and SNOP. What do you see in there? Well, uh, Dan, I'm a, I'm a Lean Six Sigma black belt, uh, so I've got that background as well as, as the uh, supply chain. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at it maybe from a unique angle, but uh, Lean and, and uh, sales and operations planning really attack the, the same problem from different ends. Uh, SNOP is all about the future. It's all about balancing supply and demand, having enough uh, lead time to to look at capacity issues, so you can uh, uh, you know reduce your risk and and, and things like that. Um, really, visibility into the future and, and avoiding surprises. Lean, on the other hand, is more short term. It's all about uh, reducing waste. It's all about becoming more efficient in your processes to really to, I mean, the end goal is to deliver uh, the product to the customer. How they work together is that sales and operations planning reduces the variability in the supply chain. And, and it allows you to uh, more effectively uh, implement uh, uh, lean, lean policies and lean principles. So they work very, very well together. Um, kind of an analogy that I like to use is, um, you know, I, 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 as most people my age, uh, you have to have uh, uh, multiple different uh, uh, lenses for your uh, far sight and near sight. So I wear contacts to be able to see far, and I have glasses when I read. And it's the same type of principle for the supply chain. You need, uh, you know, SNOP helps your company focus on the horizon to anticipate and plan for changes. And, and Lean really provides that up-close focus, uh, allowing you to effectively execute your manufacturing and supply chain operations. So they, they enable different types of things, but they uh, are very complementary. And I think uh, uh, I've seen companies that have implemented uh, uh, or tried to implement uh, Lean programs that have had issues because they've had too much variability in their supply chain. And I think if you would add sales and operations planning into that to, to smooth out the variability, your lean operations would, would uh, operate much more effectively. Yeah, that's very well said. And maybe we need to you know, add uh, you know, some lean background into your list of desirable uh, capabilities for a, a desktop process leader. That made a lot of sense. It's an interesting segue to the thing I'd like to talk about next, which is 
I kind of what are the trends in SNOP technology? And why I say there's a connection there between lean and then that question is because, you know, a lot of people and maybe still some think, you know, lean is sort of, you know, you don't need any technology for lean. Well, I think in, in many cases, certainly on the manufacturing floor, that's often proven not to the case. And same thing uh, with SNOP. There was some early, you know, thinking that, uh, boy, we, just, we, don't, we don't need technology. This is all about a process. And, boy, that sure is, is not proving true. And you talked about that a little bit at the beginning on the talk about the dynamics of the data and the what-ifs analysis and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, what are some yeah. of the, you know, key trends you see in, uh, in supply chain technology that, uh, that our viewers would, might want to know about? Okay, Dan. Well, I, you know, I think a lot has changed over the last five years. Uh, and I think most of it is focused at getting beyond the demand supply match. And, uh, you know, some of it is, is really around trying to synchronize uh, strategic and tactical planning and getting it all in the same place so that you have the whole team marching to the same beat. You're no longer worried about you know, whose plan is better because you're, you're synchronizing your strategic and tactical planning and you're all working off the same information. Uh, we've been doing a lot of focus there at Legility with our uh, Legility Voyager integrated business planning solution, which supports both strategic and tactical planning in a very visual uh, uh, way with what if capabilities. I think the other thing is, is uh, providing capabilities to provide management insight, uh, very rapid uh, volumetric and financial uh, simulation capabilities, what if scenario capabilities, again, very visual, uh, having, having the tools at, at your fingertips that you need to make dynamic decisions, um, enabling rapid response. Uh, you hear a lot about sense of respond, uh, maybe less a little bit about the, the response side. And uh, so having the capabilities around inventory and supply optimization, uh, you know, risk and opportunity assessment, you mentioned, mentioned earlier, and really collaborative uh, capabilities. And then finally, really the facilitation of the process itself so that you can free up the time of, of your sales and operation team to work on value added activities. So things like collaborative workflow and rule based alerts and having built in calendars and, and meeting management capabilities. You know, so those are things I think over the last five years, if you haven't looked at, uh, you know, integrated business planning uh, recently, I think those are the things that are, are available now. And, you know, I, I certainly wish I would have had that type of capability 10, 15 years ago when I was implementing uh, sales and operations planning. Yeah, you know, I agree, uh, um, uh, Hank. And, you know, I, I look at the companies that are trying to do this with, with, you know, limited technology capabilities and addressing all the complexities, you know, we've been talking about here. I just don't know how it's possible. I'm going to add real quick from being at the last uh, several uh, uh, Legility uh, user conferences uh, every year and a half or so, uh, a lot of companies moving towards using actually inventory optimization tools and, uh, and analytics to support the SNOP process, especially if they've gone to a so-called so PSYOP sales inventory and optimization uh, 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 operations planning process. So um, the technology has come, you know, light years over the last uh, half a decade or so. And if you, have, as you said, if you haven't looked at it, now is the time to take a look. Hank, it's been a great discussion. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Dan.